Nerd here, back with another video. In this video, we will look at what I think is an ideal FLL robot design. I'm currently working on online instructions for this robot, and once I am done, I will upload them to my website. My website will have a link in the description. For now, let's get into the video. So what I will be covering in this video is some of the sensors and motors, some of the capabilities, and the sizing of the robot, among other things that include it. We will also be talking about how easy it is to change the battery and why I chose this design. I hope you enjoy the video. All right, so let's start off by looking at a feature that will most likely affect the general design of your robot, and that is sensors and motors. Sensors and motors de depict what kind of features your robot can have, such as line following, line squaring, maybe accurate turns or attachments. So as you can see, I have two medium motors in the front. I have a total of four motors and three sensors. These two medium motors in the front are used to control attachments, which are modular, making in-base switches fast. On the bottom side of the robot, I have a gyro sensor, which is kind of hard to see here. I have two color sensors, and I have two large motors. That pretty much sums up what my sensors and motors have. I have a gyro sensor for accurate turning and going forward straightly. I have two medium motors to control my attachments, two large motors to power my robot, and two color sensors for line following and line squaring. Now let's talk about changing batteries. Changing batteries is an annoyance that everyone has to deal with, but for this robot, I decided to make it simple. All you have to do is pull on this black beam back here, and it will come off like a trunk. Then you will remove these two red pins in the front. Then simply pull up on your brick and it would slide out. Now, as you can see, it doesn't come out all the way because the wires are attached. But if I remove the wires, then the brick comes out very easily and it is ready to change. There are two pins on the bottom which secure it to the brick. These are the pins you must pull on and you must align them with the brick when you put them back in. They will be aligned with the farthest hole to the right of the brick. As longtime FLL players might know, there's usually an obstacle mission on the robot game board. An example of an obstacle mission is the bridge in FLL Animal Allies, the pipe structure to some extent in hydrodynamics, the crater crossing in Into Orbit, and in this year, the bridge mission. All of these obstacles either have a rough terrain to cross or they have an elevation. The thing about slope is that the front will always be higher than the back, meaning that your robot needs a high base from the wall of the structure to the bottom of the floor, meaning that if you don't have this, such as what my last robot design, then you will end up running into the bridge or any other obstacle mission and will not be able to complete it. This year, I've made it so that there is a gap between the wall and the floor of the mat. That way, the robot can climb obstacles such as the bridge, the crater crossing, and the presumed obstacle mission next year. To wrap this tutorial up, I would like to showcase some of the minor details that went into this robot that might have gone unnoticed. These can be useful if your team decides to use this robot, or you can try to incorporate these techniques into your own team's robot. Well, to start things off, I have made cutouts on the front of the robot, here and here. That way, if you have a large attachment which you need to sit on here, you can use this to attach it on and make sure it's stable. The second thing is that since I mode mounted the motors this way, you will have to use positive power on your motor to move backward and negative power to move forward, unlike your normal robot. 
And the last thing is that since this is a jumble of wires, you will have to use things to tighten them up and make sure they're secure so you don't have a spaghetti monster jamming your wheels and running down the field. I did include some beams here and some beams here though. I hope you learned something from this video. And I also hope the techniques and skills that you learned in this video could help you incorporate these techniques into your team's robot. Or if you decide to use this robot, I have LDD in instructions coming online soon, which will be posted on my website, which has a link in the description. Thank you for watching this week's video. And if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to let me know.